to A-level lessons online. Okay, we're going to be moving on to the next part of your H2 math, 2017 A-level paper 2. Okay, we're going to be covering this question on APGP today here, arithmetic, um, arithmetic and geometric progressions. Okay, this is a question that isn't exactly say the easiest. Okay, so you do need to understand your fundamentals of your APGP first before you actually start to do this question, right? After this question, I think there's only like about three or two or three more questions and then we're moving on to stats, right? So just... Uh, bear, bear with me for a while. Okay, I still need to go through your basic um, algebra questions or your basic math questions. So this will be one of them. Question 2. Okay, let's just go right in. Okay, on the side, I've already written a few formulas beforehand okay, so that you can just um, re be refreshed okay, of what your APGP formulas are supposed to be. Okay, so the question goes, an arithmetic progression has the first term as 3, so you know that A is already 3. Okay, remember that A always stands for your first term, right? The sum of the first 13 terms of the progression is 156. Find the common difference. So part 1, very, very simple. Let's start with part 1. So you will always let D be the common difference, so that one is no doubt. Um, but since they didn't specify here, let's just do it. So you're just going to say, let D be the common difference that you're trying to find. Okay, so you have already got the total of the first 13 terms, which is your sum of the first 13, which equals to 156. So the sum of an AP, if you guys remember the formula, in this case will always be the number of terms divided by 2 times 2A plus N minus 1D. So SN will always equals to uh, N over 2 times 2A plus n minus 1d. Alright, this is a formula that you have to remember. Okay, it's not something that's given to you and not something that is that I will explain, right? It's something that you just have to know. So in this case, S13 will be equivalent to 13 over 2 times 2 times 3, which is the first term, which is 3 as given in the question, plus the number of terms, which is 13 minus 1 times your difference, which is unknown. So when you work this out, you will have 156 equals to 13 over 2 and then 6 plus 12D. So therefore, D, just need to um, divide it, 156 divided by 13 over 2, you'll find that you'll get um, D equals to 3 over 2. So this is just press into your calculator. 3 over 2. So, so part one, very, very simple. Okay, part two, a geometric progression has the first term 3 and common ratio R. The sum of the first 13 terms of the progression is 156. So this one, you have to apply your sum of geometric progression formula at the, at the side over here. So show that R to the power of 13 minus 52R plus 51 equals to 0. And then after that, you still need to show again that the common ratio, which is R, okay, common ratio is R, cannot be 1, even though r equals to 1 is a root of the equation. So you know that r equals to 1 is going to be a root. So you don't will have to use this. This one is back to your um, normal basic algebra. Okay, so find the possible values of this common ratio. So it's just kind of like finding x in this case. Okay, let's start part 2 then. So part 2. Okay, part 2 isn't exactly the hardest as well. So you have already given, they've already given you that s13, which is the sum of your 13... Uh, terms so equals to 156. So use your formula that is up here. Okay, in this case, R cannot be 1. So that means that R has to either be more than 1 or it has to be less than 1. Okay, so you can use either formula. They'll give you the same answer. Um, let's say I use the one that goes SN equals to A times R to power N minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay, this is the formula that I'm going to use. So now you just need to sub in the relevant values. So s13 will equals to your first term, which is 3 times r to the power 13 minus 1 over r minus 1. So this will equals to 156. Now you just need to cross multiply. You had 3r to the power of 13 minus 3 will give you 156r minus 156. So bring over to one side. You and divide it. You can actually let's just divide it all by three as well. Okay, you can divide all by three and bring it all to one side. You'll be left with r to the power of thirteen minus fifty-two r plus fifty-one equals to zero. So from here to here, very very simple. You just need to divide it by three and then move it all to one side. Okay, so this would be equal to zero, and that's all. Right, so done. Shown. 
So it's the first part shown. Okay, then the next part they ask you to find what R is. So let's say okay that they already said okay that show that the common ratio cannot be one, right? So if we're gonna show this, then we're just gonna very simply let R to be equals to one. That's how we're gonna show it. So let R equals to one, you'll be left with one to the power of thirteen minus fifty two times one plus fifty one. And this you realize does not equals to um um this one will actually sorry this one will equal to zero. So you realize that this method does not work. Okay, so this will equal to zero. Why? Because the answer is trying to show you that the common ratio cannot be one even though r is equal to one. So this would show that r can be one. So therefore this method cannot be used. So this some this is a common mistake that a lot of you guys would make. You will actually use this method. So the other method we can use instead is if r equals to one s13 would be equals to 3 plus 3 plus da 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 plus 3 and this will equals to 3 times the number of terms which is 13 which equals to 39 okay hence you can actually prove over here that the common ratio cannot be 1 okay even though r equals to 1 is indeed a root of the equation okay so the previous part we've seen that it equals to 0 hence you know that r equals to 1 is a root Okay, but we're trying to prove here that R cannot be 1 in this case. Hence, the only way to do it is if we add up all the terms together. So this is not equivalent to 156. Okay, 156 was the sum of all 13 terms, right? So therefore, you know that hence, for this part, R cannot be 1. Done. Okay, then now we move on to the last part. So part 3, it is given that the common ratio of the geometric equation uh, progression is positive and that the nth term of this GP is more than 100 times the nth term of the AP. So write down an inequality, uh, an inequality and hence find the smallest possible value of n. Okay, this part we are going to have to do a bit of curve, sketch, curve sketching, okay, which I won't show you very clearly here okay, because I don't have a GC on this um, device, but it's fine. Um, actually, wait. Oh no, I realized. So we didn't finish part 2, right? Okay, so over here it says to find the possible values of the common ratio. So this part, very simple, just use GP. So sub your r to the power of 13 minus 52r plus 51 equals to 0 into GC. Okay, you'll get a curve that looks something like this. Okay, uh, this is just a very rough curve, okay? So it's just something like this. Okay, you get a curve that looks something like this. So you realize that all you need to do is you just need to sub and find the value of your um, x. Okay, in this case, it's because it, you're, you're substituting it to be your x, right? Okay, when y equals to 0 over here. And the other one when y equals to 0 over here. So you've got two points, one over here, one over here. This is when the whole equation equals to 0. So when your this part... Um, which in this case we call it your y equals to 0. Okay, then you'll just be able to find that your r equals to negative 1.45. Okay, don't forget you have got another point, r equals to 1, right? So r equals to 1, which is Na because it cannot be equals to 1, and r equals to 1.21. Okay, so those are the other two possible values of r. Okay, the reason why we still have r equals to 1 is because, like we have said just now, okay, this is the case whereby if, okay, in the event um, that it does, uh, uh, I mean, the question already said it does not exist. That's why we reject it. Okay, actually over here, I know you can't really see it, okay, but there are actually two points over here. So if I zoom in this part over here, it looks something like this. Okay, so there are two points. One of it is a 1. I don't answer 1.21. Okay, this is how it looks like on over here. Okay, I know you can't really see my, my drawing is quite bad over here. Okay, but when you press into your GC, okay, like I've said, just need to press this whole part into your GC. You can see the whole thing very, very clearly, trust me. Okay, all right, part three, part three. Let's go on to part three. Okay, so part three, right, they really gave you the the 100 times more than the nth term. So all we need to do is just compare the two equations. So one of them, we've got three times 1.21. 0, 0 to the power of n minus 1 is more than 100 times of your AP, which is 3 plus n minus 1 times 3 over 2. Okay, the reason why I did this was all I simply did was to convert the fraction of just now, which was Sn, into this. 
Okay, so the fraction, I just need to convert it. I bring it up to the top. Okay, just now you saw my fraction was over here, correct? S13, right? Equals to this part over here. So once you just need to sub in your R value over there, okay, because the reason why we sub in the R value is because they say that the R value common ratio is positive, right? So we just need to sub in that R value, okay, and then transfer it, okay, bring it on top, and then sub R to become N, because now we're trying to find the number of terms, and then you'll be able to get this equation over here, 3 times 1.21 to the power of N minus 1. Okay, so after this, all you need to do is very simply just from GC, just press this into your GC. You can't actually solve this. Okay, you will find that you will um, see, you, you need to go to the table section. Okay, so you go to the table section, you will see an X, you see a Y, 1, and you see a Y, 2. Okay, so the values will go from like 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, dot, 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 okay, on top as well. Okay, then you will see a bunch of values. Okay, so over here, you will see a different number of values. Now, the only thing you need to do is you need to find when this number, which is your y1, is actually larger than your y2. Okay, so in this case, the first one, you have got, I think, 300 and some, 346, is it? And 500. So this one is still um, smaller. This one is bigger. Okay, in this case, your y1, okay, would be your this part here, right? y2 is going to be this part. That's why you're trying to find the inequality over here when it is more than this. So when y1 is more than y2. Okay, then you've got smaller. This one's also smaller. This one's bigger. Smaller as well, bigger. Then you realize when it comes to 42, uh, that's when it changes. Now, the y1 is bigger than your y2. And from here on forth, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, that is how you know that your answer will start from 42. Okay, this is where it first starts off that um, this graph of your y1, which is your geometric progression, is more okay, than that 100 times of your AP, your arithmetic progression. Okay, so therefore, the smallest, okay, because the question asks you to find the smallest, that's why that, that case is the smallest possible value of n is 42. Okay, so this is the smallest possible value when the curve of your GP is larger than the curve of your AP. Alright, and that will be your answer. Okay, so that's all for this question. Um, not a very tough question. I think part 2 may be where it gets a bit more confusing um, with regards to the r equals to 1 and whatnot. Okay, go ahead and look through again, try and understand it. It's actually very, very simple. Okay, the question is just, you just, you just need to follow the question. Okay, and you cannot if for APGB questions, you always have to realize that you always have to make sure that you try your best not to make this mistake of having to sub r equals to 1. Okay, because of course, since r is 1, you will definitely get 0 because it's already a root. So because it's a root, you will definitely get 0. That's why 1 minus 52 plus 51 will still give you 0. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to then check with your actual formula over here. Okay, when you add up everything, okay, when r is equivalent to 1, Okay, what answer do you actually get? Uh, this is the AP, um, uh, this is the GP that you're actually looking out for. And this would be the determinant okay, of whether or not your your this progression actually um, will allow your ratio to be a 1 or whether it's not. So in this case, the question said that it cannot be 1, even though r equals 1 is a root. Hence, that would be the reason why your common ratio is um, not going to be 1 and it's going to be the other two values that you will show later on. Okay, so yes, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below. Uh, this question is an ABGP question, very classic question that is not easy like I said. So go ahead and take some time to go ahead and learn it. Alright, if not, that's actually all I have. Okay, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like. So to subscribe really does help me out a lot. And I'll be releasing a lot more videos very, very soon. So don't worry about that. Okay, do continue to keep in touch with the videos okay, so that you are aware of what's going on. Alright, so if not, um, that's all I have. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, so actually I wanted to clear up this part, okay, on, on the second part as to why R cannot be 1 and why you cannot simply just substitute um, this R equals to 1 over here into your equation. So if you if we go back to your equation, your original equation S13, okay, you realize that S13 are right at the side over here, right? S13 would basically equals to U1 plus U2 plus dot 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 U3, U4 plus until U13. Okay, this is always how your your your, your function, uh, your GP will work. So in this case, un will always be equivalent to ar to the power of n 
minus 1. So in this case, u1 will be your first term, which is 3, plus u2, which is going to be 3, times your ratio, which in this case, r equals to 1, right? Which will be r, uh, r equals to 1, which is 3 times 1 to the power of 2, minus 1, which is 2 to the power of 1, plus 3 to the power of 1 to the power of 2, plus dot 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 until you get a plus 3 times uh, 1 to the power of 12. Okay, so you notice that just because of this alone, okay, you realize that it is going to just be 3 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 3 all the way. And this will only land up with you having 3 times 13, which is equivalent to 39. And since this does not equate to 156, you realize that therefore r cannot be equals to 1. So that is the reason why. Okay, I'm just, I just want to clarify, okay, because post-editing phase, I was editing and I realized my explanation wasn't very clear. So I want to clear that once and for all. This is always how, how your, your APGP works. Okay, you add up all the different um, terms together and then you find, okay, since un equals to ar to the power of n minus 1, then you just need to sub this in, sub what your r is, sub what the term is, and you realize that in this case, you get 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 all the way. Hence, you don't get the total sum, which is actually 156. Okay, so just to clear it up.